Hello students, welcome to the first class of biology. Today we are going to start the chapter, the fundamental unit of life. You have already watched one video which has talked about, yes, all living organisms are made up of cells. So today we are starting with our first journey of cells. In today's lecture, you will be able to define the term cell. You will be able to just talk about various scientists and their discoveries with respect to the cell. And at the end, we'll be able to explain cell theory. So let's start the topic. When you talk about living organisms, as the, the video has already discussed, that all living organisms are made up of cell. But how? For example, the room which you are sitting in. If I take up the example of wall, the wall is made up of small bricks. Right? Just like this. Similarly, all living organisms are made up of cells. We have single-celled organisms also like amoeba, bacteria, paramecium. They are made up of single cell. But what about multicellular organisms like us? In our body, cells combine together to make tissues, a group of cells. Tissues combine together to make an organ. And organs combine together to make an organ system. And that make up a complete organism. So what are we made up of? We are made up of cells. So who is providing structure to our body? Cells. If I am calling some organism as a unicellular organism, a single cell organism, why am I talking about this? Because it is made up of a single cell. So who is providing structure to a living organism? Cell. So that is why cell is defined as the structural unit of life. But why it is called as functional unit of life? Can you think of? It's very simple. When I'm made up of cells, who's performing my functions? Right now, my ability of to speak these words is because of my cells. The ability of you, yours, to understand my lesson is because of your cells. So who's performing our functions? Cells. So I'll combine both the term. Cell can be defined as the structural and functional unit of life. If you are talking about cells today, that means somebody has already discussed about the cells in detail. So let's find out who is the first person who talked about cells. Yes, you have guessed it correctly. It was Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke in 1665 discovered cells. But how? You will be amazed to know he was not a botanist. He was not a zoologist. He was a physicist. He used to make microscopes. So one day he was sitting in a chemistry lab. To just check the working of a microscope, he was, was just figuring out okay, what to observe under his microscope. So in the chemistry lab, there were some chemical bottles. And on these chemical bottles, the caps were made up of a cork. So he took a thin slice of a cork. He prepared a thin slice of a cork with a sharpened knife and observed it under his primitive microscope, the old type of a microscope. And we observed that thin slice of a microscope under his primitive microscope, he was wondered. He observed something which he, has, he, he had never seen. He observed that a thin slice of a core was made up of some tiny compartments. And those tiny compartments were actually resembling a honeycomb, a beehive. And that's why he termed that this small piece of a core is made up of these tiny compartments. And in Latin language, tiny compartments are called as cells. And there he said, yes. If this particular tree is made up of these tiny compartments, it's a living organism, all living organisms must be made up of such tiny compartments called as cells. So who discovered cells? Robert Hooke. When? 1665. And this is the explanation of its discovery. Later on, with the development of microscope, scientists were able to discuss about the various characteristics of cells. So, there's another scientist here in 1674, Anton van Leeuwenhoek. He discovered living cells. He studied a sample of a pond water and he observed first living cells. Later on, there's another scientist came, Robert Brown, in 1831. He discovered nucleus. Please remember the scientist's name with its discovery date. Another scientist came, Mr. Pukinje. J. E. Purkinje in 1839. J. Purkinje gave the term protoplasm. Now, what is protoplasm? If you talk, if you talk about a cell, which you have already discussed in class 8 as, as well, 
nucleus plus cytoplasm collectively is called as protoplasm because it is a living matter of a cell. This is a part of a cell which performs all the biochemical activities of a cell. So, protoplasm was discovered, discovered by Purkinje. He gave the term protoplasm. Then, in 1838, Schlagel and Schwann came up with the concept of cell theory. They studied various types of plants and animals and came up with the theory called as cell theory. What did, they, what did they conclude from their cell theory? They conclude that all living organisms are made up of cells. They were the first organic scientists who actually talked about in detail how living organisms are made up of cells. Not only this, they gave the definition of a cell that cell is the structural and functional unit of life. After a year, a scientist came named as Rudolf Virchow in 1855. Rudolf Virchow explained how does cell arise. He said all cells arise from the pre-existing cells through cell division. The new cells always come from the old cells. And that's the difference. That's his terminology he gave in Latin language. He says ominous cellula, a cellula, which means all cells arise from pre-existing cells. So Rudolf Virchow gave this statement and it was asked to add the statement in cell theory. If somebody asks you, write the points of cell theory, what would you write? You write all the three points. One, all living organisms are made up of cell. Yes. Second, cell is the structural and functional unit of life. And third theory point that you can add in the theory is the cell, all cells arises from pre-existing cells. So, now you'll be able to answer these questions. For example, why is cell called a structural and functional unit of life? Who discovered cell and how? And you should be able to write two key points of cell theory. I hope you're able to answer these questions by the end of my session. This is enough for today's class. In next class, we'll be doing different shapes and sizes of the cell and their significance. And we'll be talking about prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. For today, stay home and be safe. Thank you.